Um, today, it was kind of hastily put together. We spent one heck of a week. Um, and I just really wanted to reach out to as many people as I could um, and create um, something. Because what I've seen happening this week is a lot of craziness, uh, and a lot of snap decisions, and a lot of fear and panic. And, uh, and, and, and so I wanted to put this together so that we could create um, um, some calm, an oasis of calm in that as, as best as we can. So the first, first topic really is in times of crisis, people will reach for one of four things. So the first thing they'll reach for in a time of crisis will be their family. They'll get closer, they'll hold their kids a little bit tighter and they'll, they'll call their mum and their granny that they haven't spoke to for quite some time and the family unit will get tighter. The next thing that might, ha might happen, some people will turn to their faith. If they're religious or spiritual, um, they will turn to that in terms of crisis. Another thing people might turn to is vices. So that could be drinking wine, alcohol, uh, drugs, um, gambling might, might actually have an increase at that time. And really that's about distraction. And of course, another really important um, vice is social media. Um, pop, a, pop a me too in the comments box if you're, um, um, the me too is probably not very appropriate. Just put me, uh, put me in the comments box if um, you, your social media has increased, your use of social media has increased over the last week. Yeah, boom, 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 there we go, yes. <laughs> There's a bit of a pause there. I, I was a bit worried it was just gonna be me. <laughs> Trying not to, Eve, yeah, that's the point. It's, it's, it's almost like a car crash, isn't it, in slow motion. And people are turning that, Ironically, it's a weird paradox because we're going there for escape, but what we're finding is, 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 is more fear and panic in that place. So the last thing that people are going to turn to right now is leaders. So this is my challenge to you people today that are on the call. Which one of these two with, with these do you want to be? If you, if you become a leader in your marketplace, a leader in your community that people are going to turn to you, you'll be able to do some good in the world. So in terms of leadership, really, the things that I think people should, should think of, if they want to be a great leader right now, what's needed, the first thing is focus. Where focus goes, energy flows. You know, Eve's comment in there that I'm trying not to look, but you're, she's focusing on the, you know, on social media, on the carnage. Uh, we've had loads of food shortages and the old toilet roll thing that everyone's talking around at the moment. But the only reason that's happened is because we focused on it. I'm pretty sure that 99.9% .9 of people who have bought more than they needed from the supermarket this week are doing it because the other idiots are over shopping, not realizing that they're the other idiots too. In fact, my wife sent me out shopping the other day, yesterday for stuff. I got to the sh shop, I said, well, what do you want me to get? She said, just get some stuff. We got, we got swept away in it. And even the people who are posting pictures of empty shelves going, I'm really angry. Why are these people over shopping? They're creating more panic and more panic shopping. Again, part of the problem. So our focus has really moved. Where, where our focus has gone, our energy has gone, and then we, there's no loo roll, there's no fresh food, there's no bread on the shelves, which is unnecessary at this point. It's not necessary. But it's a great example of where focus goes. So I want you to think about changing your focus going forward. Um, now, there's a law called the law of procession. Um, let, let me know in the comments box if anyone's heard the law of procession. Um, so the law of procession states that the outcome is at 92 degrees to the direction. So if we're at point A here, and we've got point B, so point A is where we are now. Point B is where we want to be or the things that we want to have. Um, if we just aim at point B, potentially we won't get it. 
but there's another point up here, point C. So the law of precession says that the, the, the outcome is at 90 degrees to the direction. So that if we aim at point C, we will ultimately get 90 degrees. And anybody on the call that looks at that and goes, I know that's not a 90 degree angle. <laughs> it's way off, but there we go. So point C is about being abundant, being a leader, being uh, focused on giving and helping the community and thinking about how you can help your team, your customers, your clients, your competitors, because it's time for it's time to create, not compete. So if you can find out what your version of point C is, then you'll get what you want there. But there's a problem in crisis when people go insular and they start thinking about me, me, me. That's not that's not this. That's not going to help you. So if you want to create leaders, then we first thing we need to do is shift the focus away from just got to protect myself and we shift it to how can I help others? How can I uh, help the marketplace influence other people? How can I be the person that doesn't share stupid, my mate Billy knows somebody who works in the army who says a tanks are rolling in, which is what I heard two days ago. So not sharing that stuff and, and, and being mindful of other people's mental health in this particular time. So that leads me on to my next point, which is empathy. Having real empathy for the people around you is going to create a leader out of you. So thinking about how other people are thinking and feeling and not just ourselves. And trust me, I've had moments this week where it's been difficult. And there's been times where, where I've been a bit like a rabbit in the headlight. Put a yes to roller coasters in the box if you've got if you've had a bit of a roller coaster ride this week of emotions. Okay, one minute, not the next. <laughs> All the roller coasters, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's been a roller coaster ride. But I can absolutely guarantee you that roller coaster ride, yeah, there's lots of yes coming in now. Um, lots of that roller coaster ride will will ease up if you look outwards, not in. Look outwards, not in. What can, how can you serve the community? You know, my, my, at the moment, in terms of my marketing, obviously I quite often do seminars, which I can't do anymore. I'm just going to be running free webinars and sending out stuff. I've interviewed a pandemic person, an expert last week. I've sent that out to my email list and put it on my social media. My aim is just to put as, help as many people as I can out there. I don't care if they're clients. I don't care if I don't even know them or ever meet them. If I can share something, that helps them focus on the right thing and keep them calm and stop sh sharing panic. That's what I'm going to do right now. And that's my point C. So my challenge to you guys is what's your point C? What is it that you are going to focus on that's going to get you to where you want to be? Showing empathy for other people. So the next thing, the third thing, when I prepared these flip charts, I didn't really leave enough space. It wasn't that well prepared, but there you go. Is personal growth. Have a think about the answer to this question. If you'd have spent all that extra time um, reading a book and learning and working on your personal development that you've spent on social media this week, how much more stuff would you have learned? Like now is the time to, for you guys to work on your personal development. Keep out of panic mode and keep going. Look, you know, if anyone wants any book recommendations or anything like that, or, or any resources for something they need to learn, then put it in the comments box. Maggie will make a note of it and I'll ping it out to you afterwards or, or I'll be able, maybe be able to answer it right here and now. But working on your personal development right now, your emotional management, your skills as a leader, your skills as a manager, your skills as a marketer, absolutely crucial right now because right now it's going to be the strongest that survive so next on my list is quitting on your excuses how many businesses out there do you think that are going to go bust and they're going to say it's because of coronavirus 
a lot of them were sick and wounded before coronavirus and it just finished them off. Now, a, a lot of them just didn't adapt, didn't change. They're the, the, a much shorter, it's very short term um, amount of change, but they're, they're a bit, they'll be the, like the blockbusters. You didn't change, didn't adapt, didn't move forward. So don't be that guy. Coronavirus is not an excuse for your business going under. Don't let it be the excuse. Because as soon as you go into excuse, what you're saying is that you're powerless against it. So I really urge you as leaders to take ownership, adapt, change, improve, and move forward. And the last thing on my list of leaders is ask for help. Not asking for help and figuring it out all, of, all by yourself, that is not what leaders do. Yeah, I have a coach, I have a psychotherapist, both of those I'm, I, I, I'm leaning on quite heavily at the moment, especially the coach. I have a psychotherapist to keep me from, from, from projecting my baggage onto my clients. And I've made a commitment at the moment that one, at least once a week, I'm gonna reach out to, to one of the best coaches in a certain area around, um, around the country so that I can work on, on, on being the best version of me that I can be right now. Because if there's ever a time that I need to be really sharp for my clients and for the people around me, it's right now. And I can only do that if I ask for help. And I really recommend that you guys ask for help too. Somewhere, anywhere, ask me, ask somebody else. Uh, you know, look online for help and support because this is unprecedented in what we're in right now. And we don't know what's happening. And no man is an island. So if anybody here thinks that asking for help is a sign of weakness and something that a leader wouldn't do, Flip it 100, 180 degrees. Asking for help is a sign of strength and reaching out to people, even if it's just someone who just will give you a different perspective, uh, be able to challenge your thinking is really crucial right now. Really crucial. So next thing, emotional management. So put in the comments box, um, just some words that pop into your mind. The, what's the collective emotions going around at the moment this week? What would you say is the collective emotions? Fear, panic, 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 confusion, fear, yeah, doubt, uncertainty, uncertainty, yeah. Oh, why me? Oh, uh, that's proper victimhood, yeah. Why is this happening to me? It's not happening to you, you're self-centered so-and-so. It's happening to everybody. That's such a good point though, isn't it? But there's a lot of emotional uncertainty. And this is week one. Last week, we were all in denial. This week, on Monday morning, the truth hit us um, and we went into panic mode collectively. And what happened this week is that uh, if collectively, We've taken a deep, sharp intake of breath. <gasps> but we haven't actually started breathing out yet. And that's, that's where collectively we are right now. So we need to breathe out. We need to go, okay, what's happening? I've seen so many snap decisions happening. Um, really, really fast decisions coming out. Not always the right ones through fear and panic. Um, Mary's just point, there's a glimmer of community spirit, which is great. Yeah, there is, and there will be a lot more once we get out of panic mode and we get through to acceptance and we start to, we will start to pull together, that's great. But it's really, really important that us, um, we can manage our mental states. Because I asked the question earlier about um, roller coaster rides, and I think I've got 100% agreement that everybody's been feeling like a roller coaster right now. And, and that's really important that we manage that because it's not very pleasant being on the roller coaster. Like Monday morning, this morning, I was emails banging and watching the news. And to be honest, you know, I've got my business. I've got 16 other businesses that I work with. That I was really feeling the pressure and I put loads of pressure on myself that every business must be absolutely fine and not even go down. And I put like an unreasonable amount of um, pressure on me. 
and um, I was like a rabbit in the headlights. I needed to mo manage that emotionally. So I'm gonna teach you a technique now that's gonna help you with that. Has anyone read, where have I put it? Who's read this? I'm getting some nods there. Great book, yeah, yeah. So it's called The Chimp Paradox. It's by a guy called Steve Peters. Uh, for those that you haven't read it, Steve Peters is, um, <laughs> yes, Kenny changed his tire. I remember that story. Um, Steve Peters is the, um, the co head coach for the British cycling team when they won all the Olympics. He's also worked with Liverpool. He's worked with, um, worked with Ronnie O'Sullivan and uh, done some work with the England team as well. Um, and his book is, is a real game changer for me in terms of understanding how the brain works. And this is how I, I'm going to show you how that works now. So what we've got here is information coming into the brain. Now in the book, it will tell you that there's three parts to your brain. There's the chimp brain. Uh, and you'll notice that I've drawn a human and written a chimp. That's because I can't draw a chimp. I've tried it so many times, cannot draw a chimp. So we've got the chimp brain and we've got the human brain. Now the chimp brain is your limbic system and some other bits. Um, and it's, not, it's about here, it's your prehistoric brain, it's your caveman brain. You've got your computer, which is your hard drive that stores all the information. And you've got your human brain, which is your prefrontal cortex, your modern man brain, your rational brain. Now the chimp, its job is to, is to look for threats. Its job is to um, keep you safe from saber-toothed tigers. But it's erratic, it's emotional, um, and it sometimes fills in the blanks. So it gets a little piece of information, and then it, it fills in the blanks, and sometimes it's wrong. But it's doing exactly what it was designed for, because if you're asleep in your cave and you hear a rustling noise, you want to make, make sure that your brain is to be on the safe side, is going gonna, is gonna to fill in the blanks and go, that's something that's going to eat me, I'm out of here. But of course, we live in the modern world now and that doesn't happen. So your human brain is your rational brain. This is what makes rational, sensible decisions. But what happens is the information comes into our brain and it goes to the chimp first. And if you remember, the chimp is here to protect you, to keep you safe. That's what it thinks its job is. So if the information coming in here is a threat, then the chimp's going to get involved and then it's going to deal with it and that an emotional, erratic, reactionary way. So let's just imagine I see, uh, and there's Mike here who's on the call today. I'm walking through Southampton city centre, and I don't think I've done that in about two years, but I'm walking in, in, through the shops and I see Mike across West Quay. And Mike's, Mike's seen me and I'm walking towards Mike. Now, information comes in past here and, and it gets to the chimp first and it's gonna access the computer. And the, com uh, and the question to the computer is, is Mike a threat? And if the information comes back and says, yeah, the last time we saw Mike, he made fun of us in front of loads of people and he was really mean, then the chimp will go, this is a job for me. I'm in charge now. Now, if the information comes back and says, I've searched the hard drive, Mike, what a lovely guy, really like Mike, he's all right, then, He'll come to the human and I'll have a normal uh, conversation with him. But if the information comes back that it's a threat and I'm talking to Mike, I'll probably do some, my chimp uh, makes stupid jokes and tries to impress people. With, with my, I, might, I might brag about something or try and crack a joke or something like that when we have that conversation because I'm, I'm in my chimp mode. Um, somebody else's chimp might, might be really rude to, to, to Mike because he sees him as a threat or somebody might just run the other way and pretend he hasn't seen him. But so there will always be a reaction, but I'll not feel comfortable in the conversation if I see Mike um, feeling, if I see that Mike's a threat. Is everybody with me on this? And if, if, if anyone's got any questions right now, you're not sure about, before I go on, just pop it in the box or just say, yes, I, I get it, I, I'm, I'm with you.
I just want to make sure I'm explaining it well. Yeah, 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 good, okay. So, um, this week, how much time have we all been in our chimps? Like, when, 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 when we got the news on Monday that we were in a place and the world was changing, we've spent a lot of time in our chimp this week. And our chimp is irrational, emotional, does not make good decisions. And it doesn't feel good to be in there. That's where the panic comes from. And that's why we need to be thinking in this guy. So a couple of ways that you'll know you're in the chimp. Firstly, you'll be thinking catastrophic thinking. You'll be thinking about how um, the world is coming to an end. Things are really awful. Um, Jeff said, so yeah, my chat you procrastinates. Yeah, so does mine. That's the, there's fight, fright, flight and freeze. So the procrastination is, is like the version of like hiding like that in front of the saber tooth tiger and hope he doesn't notice it. Uh, good comment in the box there, Jeff. And, uh, but you've also made me forget what I was saying. Um, but it'll come to me in a minute. So we need to make sure that we're in here. Oh, that's what I was saying. I was saying how we know that we're in our human or chimp. The first thing is speed of reaction. And you'll notice this first in other people. So if you say something to someone and their response is super quick like that, then you'll know they're in the chimp because they haven't had time to think about it. So I was talking to a client the other day and she'd said to um, a team member, uh, I want you to do this thing this way instead of that way. And straight away the team member went, oh no, that'll never work. Without even thinking about it. That's how we know she's in a chimp because she's not had time to think about weighing up the pros and cons of each of those um, alternatives. She has just gone, I'm in a chimp. I'm not doing it because I see it as a threat. So speed of response is, also, is a good way of telling. But also, is your, are you thinking about rational thoughts or in feelings? If it just creates a very fast feeling, then you're quite likely you're in the chimp. So firstly, I'm going to say, how do we get out of the chimp? Firstly, if you haven't read the book, read the book. If you read the book, reread the book, because you'll get different stuff out of it second time round. But you know, my definition of, um, um, of emotional intelligence is this. So imagine this is a river and it's flowing this way, but it's actually a river of our thoughts and feelings. Now, what happens with most people is they put themselves in the middle of those thoughts and feelings. So uh, what's the book title? It's called The Chimp Paradox, Paul, by Steve Peters. Um, so most people think that they're, they're, they're washed away in the river. Now imagine there's like a twig or something in this river and, and they're just washed away with the river of thoughts and feelings. Now, you can tell that people are in that state because they, they define themselves by the feelings. I am angry, I am sad, I am frustrated. Now, emotional intelligence is about putting yourself in a third, almost in a third person and looking at your th thoughts and feelings and saying, I am experiencing feelings of anger. I am experiencing feelings of um, frustration or panic or fear. And then when you separate yourselves, then you become, you're now standing on the bank of the river, watching these thoughts and feelings going, and then you can decide whether or not that they're valid. Because the important thing is just because a thought happens in your head doesn't make it true. Just put a yes or a why in the box. If you've ever thought something might happen in the future and it didn't, or you've worried about something that never happened. Yeah, unsurprisingly, lots of yeses coming in. Because we, we, we've, we've been in this place. <coughs> Excuse me. I haven't got coronavirus. <laughs> I've just been talking too much. I'm straining my voice. So this is the part we need to be here. And this is actually a visualization I do. I visualize myself looking at thoughts and feelings, a river of thoughts and feelings coming past so that I can then look at those and then 
decide whether or not they're valid. Because just because something happens in your head, just because you have a thought, doesn't mean A, it's your thought, it's just a thought, and doesn't mean that you are that thing. You know, <clears throat> who's ever had a thought of, oh, I'm really rubbish at this, or I'm such a bad person, or I feel really worthless right now? We probably all have at times. Doesn't make it true, does it? So before I move on from emotional management, has anyone got any questions on that? Has anyone got any thoughts or questions? Because it's really important that we can manage that. <coughs> my back of my throat is completely dry. Maybe you're watching like that Iranian minister that was getting coronavirus on TV as he was watching. <laughs> we'll see, well, the kids are off, we might as well get it now. Okay, so we're gonna move on. I need wine, yes, you're absolutely right. I do need wine and I have stocked up. So, ah, oh, that's a really great question, Jeff. Are you saying we need to suppress the chimp or just be mindful of it? Well, you can't suppress it. You can't top, you can't stop it from happening. The first battle is having awareness that is, the thought is not real. The thought is just in your head. There's a really good um, TED talk on this um called why aren't we awesomer by michael neal <coughs> if you type why aren't we awesomer in, into, into youtube you'll get the 17 minutes it really explains that really well um, but you can't suppress it you can't shut it up but what it is is thank <coughs> what it's doing is it's trying to keep you safe so the emotional intelligence going, well, thanks for, for that, those thoughts around you know, I, the fact that I should run away and hide under the desk and hope this coronavirus all goes away. Thanks, thanks for thinking of me, but I'm not, going to, um, I'm not going to listen right now. I'm going to carry on as it were. So you can't suppress it, but it's a really great question, Jeff. Okay, I'm definitely losing my voice today. I've been talking on the phone all week. So where are we? Okay, practical tips now. Practical tips that are getting us through this place. Cash flow. Cash flow is going to be king going forward. We really need to watch our cash flow. And the first thing is, <coughs> is a cash flow projection. Everybody needs to have a 13 week cash flow projection of <coughs> your best guess of how you think that's gonna work going forward. Based on the money that you've got coming in, the money that you've got going out, the money that you've got to start with, having that in place. Um, <laughs> nice water bottle, Andy, who gave me the water bottle. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> so cash flow projection in place. If you haven't got that, then you're just, you're literally gonna be guided by your feelings for the next 13 weeks. And in this amount of volatility, that's really dangerous. Um, so I've got a cash flow forecaster, uh, which is a spreadsheet. It comes with instructions and stuff. I'm really happy to share that to anybody on the call. Um, if you want it, just put cash flow in the comments right now. Maggie will write that down and we'll send that out to you um, after the call. Um, but having a cash flow forecaster in place, uh, I call it the sleep at night spreadsheet really really important in that respect so the next thing debtors almost always when i speak to a client and they're struggling with cash flow almost always the amount of money that they need is in their debtors list <coughs> and the reason that they have not um, got the money is they're too bloody nice and they're bankrolling somebody else's business. So it's really, Scott is brilliant. <laughs> Great, thanks Scott. Um, it's really important to have that in place, um, the cash flow forecaster, but the debtors is even more important. So it, in actual fact, all the money you, you might need to get you through might be in your debtors. And you've got to stop being so nice. If you agree 30 days terms and it's gone to 35 days or 40 days, that customer is out of, out of terms with you and you need to get your money back off them. 
you've got money, but it's in somebody else's bank account. So you're going to have to get tough with those people. <coughs> God, I give about £100 for a lozenge right now. <coughs> so the last thing on cash flow, where are we? In fast, out slow. In fast, out slow. So you want your cash in as fast as you can with a cash flow, having really, really good cash flow, um, cash collection strategies. So don't allow people to go over your terms. And then you can slow down the money going out with various things, getting negotiating better terms with your suppliers. And once you've negotiated better terms with the suppliers, you can then, um, excuse me, you can then pay them with a credit card and get another, 60, uh, another 50, 60 days. If you do that, you just put whatever your monthly bills are back into your cash flow. So every time that you speed money up in and slow money down out, you're making massive improvements to your cash flow, which is really, really important for you guys to do right now. So next thing, planning. So many of you might have long-term strategic plans. And many of them might just need to go out the window for a bit. I know some people on the call I've done plans with, and we really might need to vary to, to move off from that. But it's really important that we have something in place to get us through the short term. So having clarity and breaking things down into small chunks is really important. And, and having the clarity, because that will massively reduce the overwhelm of what's, what, what people are feeling right now. But it's probably right now a short term plan but you need to have one in place. Now, I'm running a, a session um, on Thursday for clients where we're gonna do uh, what I normally do face-to-face, -face, we'll be doing it virtually, uh, a 90-day planning session. I'm gonna run one on Friday for people who aren't clients, uh, completely free of charge, because I really wanna help people out in the marketplace. So anybody that's on the call that would like to come on that 90-day planning session next, um, next Friday, I do it completely free of charge because I want to help. You need to put 90 day into the comments book right now <coughs> so that we can um, get the invite out to you for next week. Great. Okay. <coughs> so opportunity. Uh, Sharon is in-house notes, it's, um, it's live, um, virtual. We'll be doing it via Skype or Zoom, just like this. So don't worry, you, you won't have to come and get my coronavirus. I don't think I'll be too popular after coughing all my way through this presentation. Um, but yes, we'll, we'll do it, we'll do it um, virtually. We've, we, we've changed the, the, the way that we do it so that we can do that. So, you know, I talked earlier about focus. It's really important to have the right focus going forwards and focusing opportunity. I truly believe that right now, where we stand right now, there's more opportunity in the marketplace than there ever has been. But we just need to be tuned into it. And that's the thing, if we're in our chimps, if we're in catastrophic thinking, if we're in panic mode, we will not be able to find those, um, those opportunities. As an example, there's going to be a lot of people now. We're mostly, I think, we're business owners on the call, so we're feeling quite volatile and vulnerable right now. The majority of people out there are employees, and a lot of them are fairly safe in their jobs, and they'll just be working from home. It won't change. <clears throat> but what will change for them is they can't go out for a meal, they can't go to the pub, they can't go to the cinema, the theatre, to bowling, to swimming, to go-karting or whatever it is that they normally do, or the football, there's no football on. So there's going to be millions and millions of people bored out of their heads with more disposable income than they normally would do because they're not going out for a Sunday roast on a Sunday. So, you know, I, I don't know exactly what everybody in the, in, in, you know, on the call does, 
But anybody out there that, that has got an offer where people can treat themselves in their own home, you market that right, you're going to clean up right now. At home pamper parties or, you know, fine wines and things like that. You know, if you go out for a meal, it costs for two, a decent meal, 100, 150 quid. And now I'm not spending that me that money now. I'm prepared to spend 50 quid on a, on a random treat or a takeaway or you know, I'm sure ladies would like to pamper themselves so that they feel you know, really luxurious in their own home because people are going to be bored and fed up, especially in two or three weeks' time when everything's still shut. There's massive opportunities there. I've got a client who, who solely does Christmas parties uh, and he does mur murder mysteries, dinners, corporate ones. And um, he is now looking at how he can do that through a Zoom like this in people's homes because morale needs to be lifted, connections need to be made. Anybody that can help people connect right now and feel that connection and find a way to do that is gonna make some money out of it. But the opportunity is not the opportunity out of people suffering, the opportunity is out of um, putting people, uh, the opportunities out of the solution. How can you solve problems for people right now? And those solutions are gonna be a, great for the marketplace, great for people, great for people's morale right now, and also good for you as a business owner. So whatever business that you're in, think about what the um, um, opportunity is right now. You know, if you're an employer and you complain that you can't get good staff, there's probably going to be a lot more staff on the marketplace right now. And you'll be able to hire some really good staff if you can. But it's really important that we focus on opportunity. So I recommend that you ask yourselves very regularly, um, what's the opportunity right now? What is it that you, where can I find the opportunity in this? To serve my community, to serve my clients, to look after my team. There has to be and there is opportunities. I'm not tuned into them all out there. I just sense that they're there. There's loads of opportunities out there. We can get tuned in, we can serve the community, we can help everyone get through this thing better and we can prosper at the same time. And with that in mind, marketing. Has anybody on the call been their marketing and cancelled it? Just put yes to marketing if you have. You might not want to because you, you, know, you probably sense that I'm about to tell you <laughs> that's not a good idea. Up the marketing. More marketing now is much more, lots of no's, good. More increased it, yes. No way, love that. We need to be spending more on marketing or more time on marketing. So that's the first thing is right now, what's our low cost marketing? Uh, LinkedIn is a great way business to business of getting, of getting connecting with people. But there's probably a load of people on the call that wouldn't be on this call right now if I hadn't reached out to them on LinkedIn. <laughs> Andy, as always, Andy is very, very um, ambitious. Spend, 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 and smash it. Yeah, go big or go home. <laughs> Love that. So that. Marketing is now is the time. You know, this is a time where we're going to sort the, the men from the boys, if you want, for, for want of a better expression. And the, the opportunity to take market share is massive. Uh, the, the money's still there. There is no money fairy that has come and taken all the money away. The money is still there. Now I've got clients who are saying, we have got the money, we're just not spending it now, we're gonna spend it later. The money is there. And especially if you can sort of offer a corona-proof virus solution to a certain problem, then you're gonna get more of that money right now. So test and measure, T and M stands for test and measure your marketing. If you're doing marketing and you don't know the effectiveness of each strategy that you're doing, you're effectively gambling with that marketing right now. So it's really, really important to reach out and make sure you're, ma you're managing each of those strategies, especially if, they're, if you're doing paid ads and things like that. Must be, you must be measuring it to make sure that it's working because otherwise you're burning cash. And I don't think many people feel like burning cash right now. And R stands for retention and repeat. Invest your marketing into your past clients, your current clients, 
to get to and to retain your clients that you've got now and to get repeat business out of people that you've forgotten that, that you've worked with before sometimes in marketing people are so busy looking for the new client and the new client and the new client that actually they forget about the ones that they've worked for before and they are six times more likely to do business with you than the ones that are um, the, 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 the ones that, that don't know who you are so really focus on that going forward and that's it that's all I've got for you today I've got some more webinars coming up next week I've got the 90-day planning one coming up soon um, I want to um, so I've got to the end of the content I'm gonna do a QA and a in a minute um, so if anyone wants to hang around for that they can anyone else can, 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 can kind of drop off and then see what Boris is saying um, but I want to make an offer to you. We're going to give you the cash flow forecaster if you want it. We're going to get you on the 90 day planner if you want it. Um, but I'm also gifting five free coaching sessions every week to businesses in the community because it's really important that we work together as that. So um, if you would like one of those free coaching sessions, can you put coaching or free coaching session into the contact box right now so that Maggie can. Um, can, can, can arrange that for you and we can have that great um, so is anyone any questions or thoughts going forwards um, that we'd like to to ask and we can maybe unmute you and, and anyone got any thoughts questions anyone Caroline, can you have a recording? Yeah, I'll send out a recording. Okay. Well, if we've got no questions, um, how long will we be in lockdown? I haven't got a crystal ball, Kenny, so I can't tell you. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, Hayley, a bit about the leader. My question, my, my, my challenge to you from the start, I really want you to remember that challenge is, I want to inspire people to be leaders in the community because that's what we need right now. So please remember, don't just come off this call and go, yeah, that was right, Jeff. I feel G'd up about that. And five minutes later, forget about that. Really commit to that. And go, what do I need to learn? How do I, who do I need to ask for help? How do I step up in the marketplace right now? How do I step up in my community? And I'd love for you, for you to email me and let me know how you've done that. Go, you know, in, in the next week or two, because it's really important that we do that. 